Welcome to the Market Pulse podcast from Equifax, where we break down the latest economic and credit insights to help you navigate today's business landscape. Welcome to the Market Pulse podcast. I'm your host, Olivia Voltaggio, a senior content manager at Equifax, standing in for our regular host, Catherine Doe. All eyes are on Washington as the debt ceiling deadline looms. The Federal Reserve Chair has indicated the Fed will likely pause its interest rate hikes when the central bank meets next month. What does this mean for the economy, and what can we expect as we look forward to the second half of 2023? David Fieldhouse, Director of Consumer Credit Analytics at Moody's Analytics, joins us today with answers to these questions and to provide a mid-year economic update. Thank you for joining us, David. Oh, thanks very much for having me, Olivia. I'm glad to speak with you. So, David, let's begin with the topic everyone is talking about, and I know you're monitoring the situation closely. So what can you tell us about the debt ceiling negotiations? Well, there, there is a growing concern that lawmakers may not reach a consensus before the U.S. Treasury exhausts its funds to pay the government's outstanding bills on schedule. Failing to increase or suspend the debt ceiling could lead to severe economic consequences and financial market chaos. The the debt ceiling serves as the Treasury's maximum debt limit for public and federal agency issuance. While the Treasury is currently using extraordinary measures and cash reserves to fulfill its obligations, these measures are only temporary solutions that reduce intra-governmental debt. Based on our projections, the Treasury is likely to run out of funds on June 8th, which is the X date that everybody is talking about. Although lawmakers are expected to reach a consensus before the X date, time is running out and the certainty in this prediction is decreasing. So, So we are monitoring this very closely. And David, what is the economic impact if the U.S. does default on its debt? Well, it depends on how it defaults. Right now, we think there's a 10% chance that the debt ceiling could be breached. And while a short-term breach is more likely, a prolonged one is no longer impossible. And, And this was previously unimaginable, and this is a real threat now. A brief breach of the debt limit could have severe impact on an already fragile U.S. economy, This may lead to a mild recession in the second half of this year with a 0.7 percentage point decrease in real GDP. Additionally, employment could be negatively affected, causing a loss in 1.5 million jobs and an increase in the unemployment rate from 3.4% to 5%. It is anticipated that lawmakers will promptly resolve the situation under the scenario leading to a settlement, although financial markets may still experience a sell-off. Global investors may demand higher interest rates on treasury debt as compensation for the risk of future debt limit breaches as well. And this could result in significant costs for taxpayers if treasury securities are no longer regarded as risk-free investments. Uh, And unfortunately, future generations of Americans would pay a higher economic price if the scenario becomes a reality. It's also possible the debt limit issue is not resolved in, in a prolonged way, and there could be a uh, an economic downturn, which is really on par with what we saw during the global financial crisis. This could result in a peak to drop decline of 4.6% in real GDP from the latter half of this year to 2024. This would lead to a loss of, we were estimating, 7.8 million jobs and an unemployment rate of 8%. The stock market would be adversely affected with prices dropping by almost 20%, and we, and we could wipe out $10 trillion in household wealth. Consumers and businesses would feel the impact through increased borrowing rates until the debt limit issue is resolved. Even after the recession, interest rates would remain high as investors demand compensation for the risk of future breaches. These economic implications could weaken long-term growth prospects, leading to almost a one percentage point decrease in real GDP and a loss of 1.2 million jobs a decade from now. So, so what, what's going to happen and how this involves in the next uh, week or two is could have a dramatic impact for the next decade. And if the U.S. doesn't default, are there lingering effects on the economy? I, I think there will be some. You, when investors perceive the uh, increased possibility of payment delays, they may exhibit hesitation and demand higher rates to offset the risk. We're currently seeing the credit default swaps on the one-year treasury securities being considerably higher than they were in 2011. And that, that was at a point when there was a previous debt limit crisis, and that led to actually a credit rating downgrade by Standard & Poor's. And a downgrade of debt could result in more expensive borrowing across the country, leading to increased costs for individuals and businesses alike. So there are you know, this is not necessarily being perceived very well by the investment community.
And in other news, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell has indicated that its series of rate hikes has cooled borrowing, spending, and economic growth. What are you seeing in terms of economic indicators? Well, we're working through this banking crisis, and that's caused some concerns. And the economy uh, overall, though, has demonstrated remarkable resilience, and that aligns with our initial projections. Um, U.S. GDP rose disappointing a 1.1% in the first quarter, according to the BEA preliminary estimates. And that was the third quarter of growth, but it's getting weaker and that will continue to the end of the year. The economy will surely have a difficult 2023 as it struggles under the weight of the elevated interest rates and tightening credit conditions. The leading economic indicators that economists often rely on are flashing red. We see a deeply inverted treasury yield, where short-term interest rates are much higher than long-term interest rates, and that's sending a resounding signal that a recession is likely by this time next year. The conference board has trusty leading economic indicators and a compilation of various economic series that historically have preceded downturns, and they are also suggesting that there could be a recession coming. So there are some concerns out there overall, but the economy has still managed to produce good job growth. So there are some positives out there. We're almost halfway through 2023. So what is the Moody's outlook for the second half of this year? Well, when considering the economy's future, it's important to remain cautiously optimistic. While there will undoubtedly be challenges ahead, we can find reasons for hope. We do think GDP growth will slow and employment progress will stall. However, there's a chance that we avoid a recession despite the high inflation and aggressive Federal Reserve policies. The current pessimism about the economy may be overstated. Inflation is still a concern, but it is cooling down and could reach the Federal Reserve's target by next year. There are several reasons for optimism. Also, first, households have saved much more during the pandemic than they would have under normal circumstances. Furthermore, businesses are doing their best to avoid laying off employees and household and corporate debt burdens are relatively low. There are some areas of concern. Low income and younger households have taken on more debt during the pandemic and lenders have lowered their underwriting standards. We we have to watch the credit conditions overall, but there is no real sign of real estate market oversupply uh, or household demand being exhausted. Instead, you know, housing is significantly underbuilt and there is pent of demand for other durable goods like vehicles. Unlike previous recessions, state and local governments will not be a significant drag on the economy. They're unlikely to face fiscal difficulties as you know, tax revenue, tax and revenue streams have not faltered as much as, in, as they have in the past. So you know, we need to be realistic about the challenges ahead, but there is cause for hope that the economy will manage through the rest of the year and, and it may be muted, but we may be able to avoid a recession. So we are, you know, we're cautiously optimistic. Given all that, what should the financial industry do to prepare? Well, I think they've already been taking steps to prepare. We can look at the senior loan officer survey and we'll see that all types of non-federally backed commercial and consumer credit have seen sharp tightening in lending terms in the January and April surveys. Uh, We expect this tightening to be a drag on credit growth for the rest of the year that will lead to some stalling in economic activity. And the amount of tightening leading up to where we are today is similar to what we saw in 2001 and 2008. And and it's one of the many reasons that uh, economists and pundits are arguing against the most recent rate hike by the Fed. And we have seen some tightening in the credit industry overall. Specifically, we're seeing more tightening with large banks relative to small banks. That may reflect a little bit of a different risk tolerance out there. So, you know, definitely lenders have been taking note of the current conditions and they've been preparing, which will help them going forward. I would say that lenders should also be open, though, to making loans when conditions are tight because they may actually have some of the best opportunities. So, you know, there's a real question about the risk tolerance that they want to take on. There are some opportunities out there. So, you know, be diligent, be careful with the loans that you make, but there is some upside risk because, you know, just everybody's so cautious right now, there's, there's a chance for some upside risk as well. And some lenders might be in a situation where they can lean into that. David, is there anything you'd like to add for our listeners today? 
I would say, you know, despite all the challenges, it is remarkable how resilient the economy is. You know, in just the past year, there has been the Russian war in Ukraine, a historic tightening in monetary policy, the banking crisis, and an increasingly dark debt limit theater that's going on. But we still have managed to expand the economy, add jobs. And so the economy is, has been very resilient. There's a lot of reasons for optimism, despite all the, all the news that's out there. So it'll be an interesting 2023 for sure. David, thank you for joining us today. If our audience would like to follow up with you, where can they find you? Well, uh, you're welcome to contact me. Uh, I work at Moody's Analytics. You can contact me at my email address, david.fieldhouse at moody's.com, or please reach out to me on LinkedIn. I would love to connect with any of your listeners. Thank you again, David. If you enjoyed today's episode, tell your friends about us and subscribe. If you'd like to send us any questions or suggested topics for future episodes, email us at marketpulsepodcast at equifax.com. And don't forget to register for our Market Pulse webinar series at equifax.com forward slash Market Pulse. We provide relevant economic and credit insights to help your business make more confident decisions and build resilience to help you focus on forward. Thanks for listening and please join us next time. The information and opinions provided in this podcast are intended as general guidance only and are subject to change without notice. The views presented during the podcast are those of the presenter as of the date this podcast was recorded and do not necessarily reflect official positions of Equifax. Investor analysts should direct inquiries using the contact us box on the investor relations section at Equifax.com.